Hello and welcome to another AIC video. So this is a follow-up to me unboxing my IBM ThinkPad X31. I've had a few days to mess with it. I've been messing with installing operating systems and different drives and just, you know, just playing with it. I mean, doing with it what I wanted to do with it since I opened it. So I uh, wanted to go over a few things and hopefully answer some questions. Uh, or suggestions that people had in the um, comments of the previous video. Uh, I kind of got some of the same questions multiple times, so instead of responding to every single one um, individually, make one video that responds to kind of all the comments. So anyways, so the first thing I wanted to do is go over the hardware of the system real quick, kind of what I've seen so far with it, some of the I, I kind of talked about some of these in the first video, but you know, kind of what I got out of the box as far as the hardware and the condition of the laptop. Then I want to talk about what it took to actually install an operating system on it and why um, it might not have had an operating system in the previous video. Um, and then in the, the last part, I want to actually demonstrate some things on the system itself. So first and foremost, let me get these out of the way. Uh, the battery is dead it is completely toast and i apologize my hands are a bit rough i've been working on, on the car so um battery is toast which is unfortunate because without the battery in there if you try to open the laptop it doesn't want to really open but if we install the battery and sorry the power cord's installed because the cmos battery is toast as well i have one on order it's on the way but it's not here yet so with the battery installed, it opens up no problem, but you see the battery light is, is blinking orange because it doesn't take a charge. Go ahead and remove that. Now let's talk about the bottom of the system here real quick. So I had mentioned the weird texture on here. I think this is the magnesium and I think it has started to, uh, I don't want to say rust, it's not rust, it's um, react with moisture. When I opened this up, you could see under here, there was a lot of corrosion. That's the word I'm looking for, corrosion. And so I think it's the corrosion that I'm feeling through this coating. Um, and it's causing it to, to be like this. But there was a, a piece of tape on here that held a little baggie with the MAC address for the um, Ethernet and the Wi-Fi and it I went to clean it off with just a little rubbing alcohol and a q-tip and the sticky part of the tape wasn't coming off but all the rubberized coating was coming off of this and now it looks awful so I'm really sad that I did that um, I don't know if I'd use like goo gone or something else to get that off I've used rubbing alcohol for years to get tape goo off of stuff without issue so i'm pretty disappointed about that um, as far as the top goes um, i've used rubbing alcohol to clean this now a couple of times and it has not had any effect on it i've had a lot of people suggest using an, a magic eraser to clean this off i have decided to just leave it because i kind of want to see what just use of the laptop does you can already see that there's some rubbed and stuff on there for me flipping upside down and opening up and hard drives in and out and all that jazz so over here is my 25th anniversary thinkpad and i just cleaned this and you can kind of see like along the edges where i grab it and hold it as i walk around the house or you know if i'm carrying it you know you can kind of see where my fingers hit and so i've worn the coating there quite a bit and I'm wondering what kind of effect that's going to have on this. So that's more of an experiment on my end as far as the coating goes. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is I mentioned previously that there was no operating system on the hard drive. I thought that was because the hard drive was bad. Somebody pointed out to me that it didn't have a COA. So I'm used to the last almost decade of working on computers. They have not had a COA on this. Again, this is my... 25th anniversary think that you can see that there's no um, license on there for Windows because it is baked into the hardware of the system. So when I reinstall Windows, 
it automatically picks up the license. But on older systems, that wasn't an option. And so, here on my HP, we have the uh, license there for Windows, for Windows XP. And if we turn this computer over, there is no license, not under the battery, and it's nowhere on the bottom of the laptop. So what people were thinking is a lot of these, the company that would buy these from IBM would spec them with no operating system installed because they would deploy a copy of Windows, whether it be through a, like a Pixie boot or an imaging or something of the hard drive to where they use their own license that they had separate. So they wouldn't buy the license from IBM for Windows. They'd already have a license for um, Windows XP in this case uh, through a deal they had directly with Microsoft. So like I work in IT, I, I work with servers. And so we have a, a license for Windows Server that everything we deploy we just apply our company license to it and it gets licensed, right? We, that's a, um, a deal we have with Microsoft. That way we're not buying individual licenses for each physical server when they come into our data center. So that makes sense. I didn't think about that with laptops because I've only been really supporting laptops in the corporate environment for, I only really did it from about 2013 to 2016 directly in supporting laptops. So um, it wasn't something I had considered. So I appreciate somebody letting me know that that was even an option. I didn't even know that you could do that. So I currently have the original hard drive in here and I tried installing Windows XP a bunch of times. I tried Windows 7, I tried Windows 10. I even tried some Linux distros. Um, these were also, USB drives that I've used to boot other computers with different Linux and Windows distros and it would not boot anything except for Windows. And I was able to install Windows XP and Windows 7, but not a 32-bit version of Windows 10. That would not load on here. And I'm wondering if that's due to the lack of RAM because it only has 512 gigs. So it can have up to two gigs and I may upgrade it and try it again just for kicks and giggles. But Let's go ahead and open it up and turn it on. So it has the original hard drive in it. Let me move the camera here. And I wanted to show you what that hard drive is doing with this installation of Windows. It's kind of funny. So I'm adjusting the camera here. And I have one dead pixel right there. It is red and it drives me absolutely bonkers. And you can actually hear that this hard drive is actually very quiet, especially for, um, you know, an older mechanical drive. And that's probably just because it's basically a brand new hard drive that just happens to be 20 years old. Boot up is pretty slow especially with that mechanical drive. And the problem that I have is if I come in here, say I go into control panel, I don't want to look at my system information. Nope. This is what I get. Windows cannot access the specified device path or file. You may not have the appropriate permissions to access this item. And it says that about everything. Um, oh, I don't know. So let me get into stuff. But if I try to install any application wherever, I get that same error message that I don't have the correct permissions to um, do anything, which is really annoying. So I couldn't use this operating system because I couldn't install the drivers and you know, the video is terrible. 
and everything because there's no driver. So let me turn this off and let me swap in the SSD. We'll discuss this. All right, so now before I boot on the SSD, I wanted to go through a couple things with the BIOS and a few things I saw when booting the system. Hopefully I catch it all quick. I may have to take a screenshot and upload that as part of the video. We'll prepare boot device list here. We have a few different options. We have removable devices, hard drive, CD-ROM, or IBA slot. I don't know what this is. Um, so, but whenever I did removable devices, I could never boot from the USB. I don't know what that allowed uh, boot from USB. Uh, hard drive, obviously, and CD-ROM drive, obviously. But uh, the only thing I could get to boot was either the hard drive or the CD-ROM drive. Now, somebody who might be more knowledgeable than me can tell me how to get a removable device to boot. Now, I tried with Windows 7, uh, several different, like I said, a uh, few different de devices, a few different Linux distros and Windows distro. The only thing I could boot was the CD-ROM specifically and a Windows distro. We go into the setup. Um, I'm running embedded controller version uh, 1.03, BIOS version 2.11. There is an updated embedded controller version and an updated BIOS. I'm not sure if I want to update those. I was going to uh, because I thought that this was an issue but, um, and I'll show you here in a second what I'm talking about, uh, but now that I was able to in install uh, an OS to the SSD and it functioned properly, I, I won't. It, it seems to be working fine otherwise, so leave it, as it, leave it as what it is. Save changes and exit. Now it's going to boot up here in diagnostic mode. And this right here, U.S. government users restricted rights. I thought this was a problem that was causing my issues with Windows uh, XP with the hard drive. And it was really annoying. And so that's why I tried all the different installs. I tried three or four different um, Windows XP options downloaded from like archive.net and one I've used for like even one of these discs is one that I know I have used to install Windows XP on other systems. Now I do use a cracked version of Windows XP because I can't buy a legitimate copy anymore. If I could, I would. If I could buy legitimate Windows XP licenses from Windows, I would. But at this point, even computers that I have that have legitimate keys, half the time I can't even get them to activate correctly through Windows. So that's why I use a cracked version. It's just, it's to make my life easier on these older systems. I'm not pirating software. I'm just using, I mean, in this case, it may not have come with Windows XP, but you know, but you can see how much faster it is to boot with the SSD on there. Um, it's only 30 gigs versus 40 gigs. Not that big a difference. Uh, I do wish it was a little bit bigger, but you know, at this point it's working. I'm not gonna install the world on here. This is not gonna be my main computer. But you can see we have a background, we have applications installed. If I want to look at system properties, I can, and I don't get that permissions issue. So what I did is I kept trying to install Windows XP. I, I did it on this SSD and it just completely failed. It wouldn't install at all. Um, and then I tried to the Linux distros and they wouldn't install it all. And so I, just out of desperation while I was waiting for a floppy drive to show up so I could flash the uh, BIOS, um, I thought, heck, why don't I go ahead and try to install Windows 10? And it wouldn't even boot. Like I said, I just got broken pixels on the screen. So then I tried Windows 7 onto the SSD and it actually installed. And it actually worked great. The only problem I really had was that there were no drivers. All the drivers for this machine are for Windows XP. And so the network didn't work, the Wi-Fi didn't work. Um, so I couldn't do any updates or anything uh, to it to try to see if uh, Windows updates would pull down any drivers for it. So that was really the reason why I didn't keep Windows 7 is because I couldn't get it to work. And I do have a, a Windows 7 license. So that's why I was kind of thinking if it doesn't come with a Windows license, I use that because I do have a legitimate copy of that I can use. Anyway, so it wouldn't work, didn't install. Um, 
and or, or excuse me it did install but i couldn't have any drivers so i couldn't actually use the laptop and so i thought well now that i've installed windows 7 let me try one more time to install windows xp to the ssd now that i know i can install an operating system to that drive let me try it and it worked and i was super surprised and then it let me start installing drivers and once i had the network driver installed then i went to uh, I'll show you here. Legacy update. Now this is something I just learned with this laptop. This has been around for a while, I guess, but you have to obviously have network access, but legacy update, it has updates for XP, Vista server 2008, 2003, and 2000. I believe they're even doing windows seven now that you can update, uh, do updates for that because Microsoft has turned off the updates. And so I, I got drivers from thinkpads.com which is a, a users group a forum um, and they have a lot of older drivers things like that uh, but when i was done installing i still had a few unknown devices that i just couldn't find it figure out which was the correct driver for and so i came here did legacy update didn't have a whole lot of hopes and it actually found the drivers and installed them updated several other drivers as well and so i have all the hardware installed, all the drivers updated, all the patches for the OS that I could possibly want on here. So huge shout out to Legacy Update. Um, if you have an older system like this, um, I definitely recommend checking this out. Um, whoever is doing this, thank you. I, I do appreciate that. And then, like I said, I've installed some games on here. So let's go ahead, open one up here. I think I have it on mute. No, nope, it was off mute. Oh, so for this one, what I have, I go to Windows. This is running off an ISO. Because I took my legitimate copy, because this doesn't have a CD ROM drive on it. Turn it ISO. And the games I've installed so far have all run great. Very happy with the performance. I am running this at the native resolution. just start the race and show you how well it runs I found that if the system doesn't it doesn't run too well on here or doesn't run these games very well this is to be real choppy um, so I'm playing this kind of like delay through the camera so I'm not going to finish this race uh, but you can see it runs real smooth I know this is an older game but it does play this game very well at this resolution of the monitor. Um, so I'm very happy with it. This is exactly the kind of game I'm going to play uh, on this system. Now, if you have some software you'd like to see demonstrated on here, let me know. If it's free, I will happily download it and try it out. Don't send me anything that will ruin my machine, please. <laughs> but uh, I definitely want to know what people, you know, if you're using these older vintage computers, what are you using for? Obviously, Windows XP is a pretty old operating system. Um, I don't have a modern browser on here. I did try to install Opera, but I kept getting a DLL error, and I haven't tried to resolve that because I'm not going to get on the internet with Windows XP. That's <laughs> kind of dumb. But um, it, uh, you know, what are you using on it? You know, what what do you want to use it for? Uh, I I know that I have some older games I want to play, uh, things like that. But you know. Tell me, and uh, I'll see what I can do to, to demonstrate it. But yeah, this is kind of a final update on this system. Uh, if you have any thoughts, comments, or questions, leave that down in the comment section down below. I will do my best to answer those. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have an amazing day.